Welcome back to First Year in Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and coming to you today on a beautiful sunny day in Scottsdale, Arizona. It is the time of year to be here. If you guys have never been to Arizona during February, March, uh, it's when all the spring training's going on, there's a lot of events going on, and it is absolutely beautiful. So if you're ever in a cold place like I was from Iowa, and you're sick and tired of it, and you're looking for a nice getaway, Phoenix, Scottsdale has a beautiful place to come to and has great food and it has a lot of cool stuff, but you don't care about that because you're worried about medical device sales. So let's get into today's episode of talking about medical device sales. But before we get started, I wanted to come on here and let you all know, if you guys all saw my post, last week was my last day with my previous company, Innovis Medical. Um, and a lot of people have reached out to me. It's been very sweet, but I just wanted to all let you know why I have decided to leave uh, Innovis and why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I've been so blessed to have so many people reaching out to us and then being able to help so many people. The side hustle became the main hustle. And what I mean by that is we've had so many people reach out. And if anybody knows me, knows how much I love to help people. It's why I was a personal trainer. It's why I was a strength and conditioning coach. I loved coaching athletes and I wanted to help them get better. And the thing that a lot of people don't understand is once you get into the coaching world and getting to help people, the first number one thing is I've had the success. I've had the 50 plus thousand dollar commission checks in med device sales. I've done where I've taken lowest performing territories to top 10. I've been able to work with a startup and grow it to a large territory. I've made large deals when with a company, right? Like it's been an awesome experience. But what's, what most people don't understand is I love watching other people win more than me, right? It's why we have new to medical device sales. And what people don't understand there is like I've told these people, I'm getting people hired that are making $40,000 a year that have no sales background, no clinical background, and we're getting them hired at over 110K start now. I just got a 22 year old hired as a full line rep at $148,000. And it's so amazing to see those people change their actual lives. And I always say this in the most respectful way is like me getting another massive commission check doesn't do anything for me. Um, Cause as a kid who had $66 to his name six years ago, it doesn't do anything for me. I can take the trip or I can go get a nice car or whatever it is. Um, but what it is, is I never started this for any other reason, but to help people. And it's why I wanted to share that today is because I'm continuing to help people. And what I noticed is I love med device sales and I love being in that community and I always will be in this world. Um, but I also love watching you guys win and I've had the success. I have people in the industry. I've been able to continue to do it. And so I want to continue to help you all. And what I noticed is, you know, even though I loved being at my company every hour that I'm there. I'm not able to get on the phone calls with you guys. I'm not able to help coach our people. I'm not able to continue to grow and make more podcasts like we are today to continue to help give you all value so you can win. So I wanted to just let you all know that because I always am wanting everybody to know where I'm at. And also just, I always want to put that out there. It's control the narrative at the end of the day. It was not Jacob. Oh, Jacob got fired or Jacob. No, I turned my two weeks in. I chose to pursue my journey in entrepreneurship and do this because I love helping people. I love coaching people. So I just wanted you all to know that. But why I'm making today's episode is because I have gotten a lot of people reaching out that are associate sales reps, full line sales reps, tenured sales reps, and they're all saying the same thing in the last 14 days. Can you help me? Can you help me I'm an associate, but can you help me actually make over $130,000? Hey, I'm working as a full line rep, but I'm not making that much money and I want to go to another company. Hey, I'm a tenured rep and I just lost my job. Can you help me get into medical device sales? And so the reason I'm making today's episode is because yes, we can help you. And I want to give you guys some actionable steps that can help you. So here's the number one thing that you should all know. I've helped people break into medical device sales. It's what new to medical device sales. Our average person breaks in in 8.2 weeks at $94,478. And it's absolutely amazing. And those are the time they start the course and we're able to help them break into the industry with and without sales experience. But we've also been able to help associate sales reps go from an associate to a full line rep in eight months. We've helped associates to go to that full line rep role and make over 150 in their next job. We've been able to help full line reps who are only making 110. And a lot of times it was like in the ortho space and they're making 90, $110,000. And they've been in for a couple of years. We've been able to help them go to other places and actually make more money. And then with the tenured reps, we've helped them land jobs as well. But the real reality is a lot of times they've been doing stuff for 20 years, 10 years, five years, whatever it is, and they're not doing what they need to in the new market. And so 
I just want to put some things out there that can hopefully help you all as you are all searching for new jobs. So the number one thing I see the biggest mistake is everyone's like the hardest part of getting in or med device sales is getting into med device sales. So you all think now that you're in med device sales, all you have to do is put out a resume and you'll get a job. If you have tried that, you all understand that does not work. It doesn't matter if you have an associate sales rep position at a large company. It does not matter if you've done a lot of selling, right? Like the reality of it is if you aren't doing the right things, it doesn't matter if you're in med device sales. Yeah, could you get some interviews? Yeah, that's great. But again, the reality of it is, is you have to be doing the right things throughout this whole process. So the one thing I'll just sit here and tell you, you guys just applying will not work. Could you get some interviews? Yes. May a recruiter call you? Yes. But just putting your application out, Again, you all have been in the industry, but again, we I just helped a 22-year-old with no experience get in as a full-line rep, right? The whole comment and the whole thing to think about is how did that person do it? It's because they're showing that they deserve it. I was just having a conversation with one of our people this morning, and the whole conversation was he was like, my background is A, B, C, D, and I am pretty sure that they would want me over this person because of A, B, C, D. And I looked at him and I had the conversation. I said, and that's why you're going to lose. And he looked at me and he's like, what do you mean? I was like, because you think you're better than you actually are. And that's not me being mean, but this is the conversation I had with him. And I was like, I want you to think about this. I played college basketball. I've worked with professional athletes. I've done the strength and conditioning world. Do you know how many athletes I worked with that should be all pro? That should be like the top dogs that should have gone to the league that should have been like way better than NAIA or whatever it was because they had verticals that were crazy. They could shoot from anywhere. They were so quick. They had stuff you just can't teach. They're genetically gifted. But you know what they didn't do? The work. You know what they didn't do? Show up on time. You know what they didn't do? The little things. You know what they didn't do? Recovery. You know what they didn't do? The list goes on. So the reason I'm just telling you that to anybody who has med device experience and who's all saying, oh, I have med device experience, so I'm more qualified than Jimmy or whoever, let me just sit here and tell you that's why you're losing. Because again, you're talking to the 25-year-old who bro broke into medical device sales as a full-line rep and beat out people with 10 plus years experience. And everyone will be like, well, Jacob, that's not fair. I have experience. It didn't matter to me because you want to know why they all took a shot on me? I was hungrier. You want to know they took a shot on me? I did more work than the rep who had experience because a lot of times those people with 10 plus years got bad habits. 10 plus years don't do the things that the new ones do. People with all the habits that have been in med device sales for a long time, they might not be doing what they did when they first started. And again, there's a reason sometimes you don't need to, right? Like you've, you've learned. But the reason I just want you to all hear this and know this is like, again, if you've been in med device sales, just applying, just putting stuff out to recruiters, it will not just help you because of your background. Why would they choose you? Because again, you just have to understand. Let's say you come from J and J, Striker, Medtronic. J Name the large company that you're at, and you're like, I hear this all the time. Once you go to this company, you can go anywhere. I heard that at literally every company I've ever been to. I just had performed at Medtronic, which was the largest company in the world, and I had some capital skincare equipment saying, Yeah, you come here and you sell here. You can go anywhere. And I looked at them and I was like, I just turned the lowest performing territory in the nation at the largest company in the world. I already can go anywhere I want. They didn't know how to answer that. The reason I'm just saying that, that's what everyone thinks. The reason I want you all to hear that is because just by putting that on your resume, you might get some looks. But then when you go in the interview process, who's the hungriest? Who's doing the work? Who's doing the networking? Who are you reaching out to? Who knows about you already? That's what people are missing. Number two I hear all the time is, oh, the recruiters. Now, here's the thing. There are some recruiters that are great. But if you guys have been in this season for a little while, and if you've been in this industry for a little while, you'll know most recruiters will actually call you. You're not even qualified, put you up with a regional manager, and the regional manager will be like, you don't hit any other criteria. And you're like, you, cho you called me. And they're like, no, I recruited it. And I'm like, yeah. And now they just wasted both of our times. The reason I'm just saying that, I've lived it. <laughs> like I've lived getting into a cardiac space where you needed five years experience. I had zero and the recruiter put me up for it. And then me and the uh, regional manager sat there and they're like, yeah, we can't do anything because you don't even meet half of the requirements. And they're like, yeah, you, your recruiter called me and put me on this call. I didn't choose this. Many people are like, oh, I'm just going to go work with the recruiter because I have the experience. Well, that's great if the recruiter cares about you and works exclusively with you. But what you have to understand is a lot of times they don't. They don't care if you're Johnny or Craig or Sarah or Julie or whoever, they're going to put 30 of you together and they get paid off of whoever gets hired. 
So here, go figure it out. And then you all are like, oh yes, I got my background. So here, let me just sit there. And then you guys take it as this like, oh, I just have to sit there, give them my resume and then tell them how much success I've had, right? It doesn't do enough because let me think about this. Let me all have you think about this. You're in sales. Do you ever go up to a doctor and say, hey, my name's Jacob. I sell this product. And they're like, oh my God, where have you been all my life? Take my money. Never. Like I haven't had it happen. You know what I mean? It's always been like, they might tell you they're interested and then you have to go through four more hoops. The reason I'm saying that is the same thing in the interview process for you all. Yeah, you might go meet one person. You might meet the regional manager. You might meet the deciding factor or the person who's making the decision. But again, just that person needs to have other reasons to hire you, not just because of your resume. So number two is again, recruiters are great, but many people in medical device sales that are already there just rely on them and just be like, oh, they'll give me a job. And you have to understand, like I've had recruiters tell me all this stuff. And then what do you guys experience? You get ghosted. Oh, I can't figure it out. Well, the, the reality of it is I tell our people this all the time. People will use a recruiter all the time. And then especially with our people who are trying to break in and they don't have any experience. And then they're like, yeah, they didn't get back to me. Or they're like, here's my favorite. I'm going to talk to the recruiter who's going to talk to the regional manager, who's the regional manager who's tell the recruiter that the recruiter is going to tell the person. Why don't you just take the recruiter out of it and you just talk to the manager? We literally had, we have instances where our people are texting the hiring manager and the hiring manager is like, yeah, the recruiter should be reaching out to tell you this. Why they even have to tell you? You just got it from the direct source, right? If you guys have ever played the game telephone, you will know what gets said by one person doesn't always get to the next person, right? The way it was supposed to be delivered. Just your background is not going to get you there. Just having a recruiter is not going to get you there. And then number three, this is one of the largest mistakes is just, again, it's down to networking. It's reaching out and you have to do it a very smart way, especially if you already have a job. But people will just still, I literally just got it. I had somebody being like, Jacob, why don't you work with tenured reps and all these people? And I was like, I never said I didn't. And they're like, oh my gosh, I apologize, blah, blah, blah. And then what do you think is the next thing they did? I'm looking for a job here. Let me know if you know anything. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Why would I help you? This is what you all have to think. And everyone will be like, well, you're a jerk. You won't just give me a free job because I sent a LinkedIn message. Why would I? Because a message that I just got told being all passive aggressive because I don't help reps because I never said I did. And now when I said, I never said that, you're like, oh, smiley face. I know, didn't mean that. All right, now give me a job. And then guess what? We'll watch this and be like, you never got me a job, you jerk. <laughs> but you get yourself a job. Oh, but now you got to do the work. That's what most of you are scared of. You got to do the work. You got to get on calls with reps. You got to get on calls with managers. You got to do your research. You got to run your actual job while you're doing it on the side. Yep. I'm gonna do that one more time. Yep. It's hard. Yep. It's a lot of time. Yep. But Jacob, don't know what to tell you. As someone who's done it, as someone who ran the Western United States and built a company on the side. Yep. It's hard. Yep. Do the work. Right? And I will just sit here and tell you, there are going to be a lot of reps watching this and be like, I already, I just talked to a guy the other day. First time I watched your video, I thought you were a jerk. I thought you were whatever. Insert whatever you want. It's okay. Right? Because what I tell everybody is you can either get mad at me for saying this and then you guys don't do it. And then you call me and that person, why they call me back is they're like, I tried it for three months on my own and I realized everything you were saying was true. I don't have anything to gain from me telling you guys this. It's what I see in the market. And it's, and let me just make this really clear. It's you guys listening to me. It's you guys coming back for the information I keep putting out and then you guys use it and it works. Again, I'm just trying to help you all. So the reason I go on that little tangent, the little thing is the amount of message that I'll get. Oh, this, 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 this. It's just guys, I don't know how else to say it. It's hard. It's challenging. It's you got to do the work. Oh, but I have a family. Yes, I know. But you also are wanting this. But Jacob, oh, oh, and then this is my favorite. Oh, Jacob, okay, so I listen to your free stuff, but okay, I want to get on all these calls. I want you to coach me. I want you to tell me exactly what to do. And I'll be like, great, we offer this service. And they're like, yeah, but I don't want to pay you at all. And I'm like, that's great. When was the last time you went and worked a surgery for free? Oh, I just remembered, never. And that's why I can sit here and smile because we'll reframe everything. And that's what I want you to all hear 
because hopefully in that message you just heard, maybe I'm being a little selfish. It's what I tell all of our people in new to medical device sales. You in this moment think you're the most important. But when you're talking to that hiring manager, that person has a quota, they have a team, they have a family, they have someone screaming at them, they have to go get gas for the car, they have to let the dog out, they have to do stuff. And the person in their LinkedIn is the last person on their mind that wants a job from them. That's how you have to think about it. And you have to think about how are you going to win throughout that process. So I hope this podcast is helpful. And so some of you, you might be like, man, this guy just is a jerk and he all that thing. I'm sorry if that came off that way, but I want you all to know I do this because I just want you to win. Because again, what you've been doing for the last 10 years to get jobs, you can't do in today's market. What you've been doing for whatever length, it's not the same. And here's what I'll hear all the time. Well, Jacob, but I did this and oh, it worked or people will go do it. And like, I can, I can just sit here and tell you, I see it with new to medical device sales all the time. People will be like, oh, I'm going to go do it on my own and do this stuff. And then I, so I'm like, great. And then I watch them break in eight months later. And then guess what? Who gets a call literally tw- four months later? Oh, but it's not what I, and I'm like, yeah, but you didn't want where we do this every day and we can help you throughout the process. But you didn't want that because you wanted to save a couple bucks and now you're eating it and now you just wasted time and now you're losing money. And now you have to try to explain why you're making this jump and all that stuff. And that's what most people don't understand is like, this is the investment for your career. Like it's different if it was just a job, but it's an investment for your career and it's what you want to do. And so what I would just sit here and tell you is if you, it's why you're listening to the podcast and that's why I love it. You guys are putting in the time and the effort because you want the change. You're putting in the time and the effort because this is a career and you want to get better. You, I will just sit here and tell you, you would not still be listening at this point after throughout the whole podcast of what I went through if you didn't vibe with what we're saying and understand that you know you want to get better and you want to be in a better place for you, your future, and your family, and your fi- future family. That's why you're still listening to this right now because you want that change for yourself. And so what I would just sit here and tell you, and I would encourage you is do the work, my friends, find people that are doing it every single day and see if they can help you. Right. It's like, again, I will just sit here and help you tell you guys that, yes, we do help with that process. And if you're interested, you can reach out to us new to medical device sales on LinkedIn, Jacob McLaughlin, and happy to help any way I can. But what I'll just sit here and tell you so many times people from what they did to break into med device sales. It's no different than what you have to do once you're in the industry. Like I say this all the time, I networked more once I got into med device sales than I did try to get into medical device sales, right? And it's what led to other opportunities. But most people just don't think that way. And they're like, oh, because, and it goes back to what I'm just saying is it it goes back to once you're entitled, once you think you have whatever on your resume, then you're like, oh, I should get this just because of this. And it's what I told the individual I talked to this morning from our course. The reason I've been able to have the success, the the reason I've been able to make the deals after deals and close the large deals in med device sales is because every single day rent is due. And it's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what you accomplished yesterday. What are you accomplishing today? What are you working towards to tomorrow? Because that's what matters in life. And so that's what I just want you to understand. Because if you can keep that mindset throughout your career and throughout your life, It's going to be freaking amazing to see everything you accomplish in life, guys. It truly is. But what I see people do is they'll go and then they have a little bit of success and then they're like, just time to let up because I got ABC and they stop. No, no, no. I'm saying there's spaces and times in that. Maybe you get married or whatever it is. There's those times and there's new seasons for every person. But when you can come with the mindset, I don't deserve anything and rent is due every single day, and I have to put in the work no matter what. I want a new job. I need to put in the work. I want a new career. I want put in the work. I want to make more money. I need to put in the work. I want to make these jumps. I need to put in the work. I want to learn more. I need to listen to more, read more. I need to put in the work, right? And so that's what I would just sit here and tell you. But if there's anything that's helped propel my life so much quicker than it would have been, was getting mentors, getting people who've already done it, and people who do it on an everyday basis, So instead of me guessing, instead of me wasting hours and hours trying to figure it out on my own, you just go find the people who've already done it. And it's what we've said always, you just save time and money. Because maybe you figure it out, maybe you get to the place you want, but maybe you don't. Maybe it took you way longer than it should have. Maybe you didn't come in at the income you knew you should have, right? And so that's what I would just sit here and tell you to think about because you all are worth it. You all have the opportunity to go crush it in medical device sales. And I just wanted to share the, some of the mistakes that I see the people who are wanting to break into medical device sales, but they don't go hard in it. 
they they think because they got in it's the lie i hear all the time and everyone always asks me why are there so many average reps because of what we just said the hardest thing you do is break into med device sales oh get the heck out of here the hardest thing i ever did was get into med device sales then i got into med device sales and guess what the hardest thing was med device sales but then you want another job in med device sales yeah you can go get another interview but guys understand you're going up against a bunch of other people that want that same job. You want a job for $180,000, $200,000 full line rep roll? <laughs> you and about a thousand other people. You want to go work at a large company that's going to pay you $200,000 at plan, going to give you a car, going to give you a gas card, going to pay you a lot of money, give you the best benefits. You probably have a pretty good work-life balance. Guess who wants that? A lot of other people. So by you just saying you worked at this company, by you just sending an application, you think that's good enough? No way. You gotta be hungry. So I just wanna keep encouraging you guys, keep going after it. What I'll end our podcast on all the time from now on, and it rubs people the wrong way some days. And I absolutely love it because if they are, we know they ain't eagles because eagles don't fly with pigeons. So keep rocking and rolling, keep doing your thing. I truly appreciate all your help. Please press the like and subscribe button. It's how we grow this channel. If you can share this with somebody that you feel is helpful. It would mean the world to us. Writing a review to us on podcast would it mean the world. And again, you guys, I want you to win. If you are interested in taking the next step or you're in that different spot of your career, more than happy to work with you all and just see where we can help you. Um, you can reach out to me at Jacob McLaughlin on New to Medical Device Sales or Jacob McLaughlin on LinkedIn. But I just want you to know, I want you all to win. I want you to all keep crushing it. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.